Hello there, you are watching the press preview. A first look at what's on the front pages as they arrive. It's time to see what's making the headlines with The Sun's political editor, Harry Cole, and The Guardian's chief political correspondent, Jessica Elgott. They'll be with us from now until just before midnight. So let's see what's on some of those front pages for you now. The Financial Times leads on the Bank of England's warning of a 15-month recession and that inflation set to hit 13%. With the Guardian highlighting the rise in interest rates. The Mail is accusing the Governor of the Bank of England of being asleep at the wheel on their front page. Families are warned of tightening purse strings as the Telegraph's headline reads recession to cause record drop in income. That's also the lead story for the Metro, their headline, The Big Squeeze. The Eye has followed suit. And amid that inflation morning, the Express says it's time to batten down the hatches. While the Mirror asks why the Prime Minister and Chancellor are on holiday as the bank announces the hike. Meanwhile, the Star contrasts the bad news of inflation with the good, the return of the Premier League. The Sun, however, leads on former Love Island winner Kem Setine's involvement in a road collision. And a reminder that by scanning the QR code you'll see on screen during the programme, you can check out the front pages of tomorrow's newspapers while you watch us. And tonight we are joined by The Sun's political editor, Harry Cole, and The Guardian's chief political correspondent, Jessica Elgott. Welcome to you both. Let's start with the Financial Times, Bank of England, uh, their prediction of uh, recession and the interest rate hike. Uh, let's start with you, Harry. Yeah, about as grim a day of economic news as you can get, Rishi Sunak said tonight on the Sky Debate. Uh, the red lights are on the dashboard are, are flashing, and I think that's somewhat of an understatement. Um, massive rates rise, predicted in 13% um, inflation, and 15 months of, uh, of recession that is uh, not as deep as the 2008 one, but as bad as the one in the 90s. Now... Um, lots of question marks over how that will be dealt with by the two candidates um, tonight, but um, lots of question marks also about who's dealing with it now. The the Chancellor um, not in it at his desk today, putting out statements, working from wherever he is, uh, but not at his desk in the Treasury, and the Prime Minister also on holiday. So all in all, a pretty grim day and um, one that sort of opens up more questions than it answers. Yes, uh, Jessica, what do you make of uh, the fact that both the Prime Minister and the, the Chancellor are not around <coughs> at this uh, very, very important time? It, it, I mean, it certainly feels like that the, the government's hung the out of office uh, sign on the front door of uh, of Number Ten Downing Street, and that and that people, you know, any kind of reassurance, and and and, and bear in mind ordinary people seeing these headlines on the front of every newspaper, people who already feel like they're out of credit at the end of the month. Um, and and they can't and their budgets can't take anymore. They can't take you know even the threat of the rising energy bills, but this the soaring inflation. Um, and to hear you know practically nothing from the from from the people in charge, uh, and only hear um, disagreement about the way forward from the people who are vying to lead the country, uh, and also very, and very little from from either of them about what directly they're going to do on the first day um, in number ten to help people not you know go go into the go into the red and, and stay in the red uh, and suffer because of that the guardian uh, pointing to the 13 percent warning inflation will hit that that figure um harry what did you make of how both candidates um responded to this in our debate this evening yeah, I look, Rishi Sunak's in, a, in an unenviable position because obviously until two weeks ago, God, it feels about two years, until two weeks ago, he was, um, three weeks ago, he was still the Chancellor. Now, whether right or wrong, I think he's going to struggle to distance himself from some of the economic the policy decisions made. Yes, the bank is independent, but, um, you know, there was a time when this government, certainly the Prime Minister, was talking down the prospect of soaring inflation in recent uh, in in recent months, Liz Truss, you know, to her credit, she did say today, "Look, this isn't inevitable. Recession is not inevitable." Despite what the bank's warning, the bank's saying, "If nothing else, if, if nothing changes now, this is what's going to happen." Rishi Sunak.
like I said, look, well, you know, I have to wait and see, but my my I don't want to make anything worse. But I think uh, you know, trust is saying, well, actually, no. Like you know, if if this this horror is coming down the tracks, maybe we should at least try something um, in order to in order to at least try and stave off, to go for growth now, try and cut taxes now, put more money into people's pockets with an, uh, by reversing national insurance rise in five weeks' time to try and to try and basically ease some of the cost of living pain. Whether or not it's going to be enough, I I, I doubt it very much. But um, what my big takeaway tonight was actually I was really struck by Sunak saying. Actually, I'm not going to say what I'm going to do. In fact, I might not do anything. All I will do is I, I promise I'll help out somehow. But I need to look at the numbers. I need to look at the numbers in six weeks' time. Well, actually, the numbers are pretty stark today. And I don't think he's going to be able to get through the next five weeks without putting a bit more flesh on those bones of what his plan is beyond saying, don't vote Liz Truss. Jessica, do you agree with Harry that uh, Rishi Sunak will, will struggle to distance himself from uh, economic policy that's gone before, bearing in mind that he was the Chancellor up until a, a few weeks ago? Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, Harry's absolutely right. I mean, it's 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 very it's very difficult for you to to run on your record when you know today is is you know it's not only Rishi Sunak's fault, but you know it is he's, he's the person who's been in charge of the public purse for the last two years, and and his answers you know to it, which he's announced, including things like cutting VAT off in energy bills, that's something that might have more of a direct impact on on on, on household bills, but it's something he rejected as Chancellor time and time again. You know, when he had the power to do it in number 11, he said that he wouldn't do it. And so to come out now and say that that's what's, you know, something that he would do in the autumn when it's some, something he already had the power Although to do. Although he did say during the, the course... Weak. It feels quite weak. He did say during the course of the debate that um, he did differ with Boris Johnson on, on economic policy. And actually, that was the ultimate reason that he left, that they were going in different directions. So does that not distance him from what's gone before? I mean, I think one of one of the things that they they clearly had big differences of opinions on was 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 immediate tax cuts and 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 Sunak's you know not rolled he hasn't reversed on on that front he's he's said that he doesn't think that he's he, you know consistent that, that that he thinks tax cuts would be inflationary uh, which is which is the big dividing line in this contest. Let's move on to the metro. I mean, they're all on the um, financial theme. Bank of England Governor Andrew Bailey. Uh, pictured there. Uh, the big squeeze is, is their headline um, and there's there's no other way to describe it, is there, Harry? No, I think, you know, if people are thinking things are bad now, um, you know, th th what it's going to feel like, they're still saying inflation is going to be possibly double digits this time next year. And that's, you know, a catastrophic effect on people's pay packets and their wages on their bills, on their on their cost of living. Um, this isn't, clearly isn't something that's going to go away anytime soon. And there has to be a point, you know, the, the Sunak's defence is he's already, you know, essentially given £1,600 to the um, poorest households in Britain, lots of lots of support already made available, but it just looks like a drop in the ocean. It will feel like a drop in the ocean. And you have to wonder at what point do you end up getting to a sort of almost like a relaunch, not a relaunch of the furlough scheme, but something of that scale in order to um, in order to protect people from the price rises, not just now, but the ones coming down the line. The, the, the predictions, the experts, the economists are saying, you know, this is going to reach, the, the price cap is going to reach £3,500 a year. And that's just, people are just unable to afford that. There's already whispers and, and campaigns being launched of saying, look, you can't, you can't, you can't, they can't prosecute everyone if everyone stops paying. I was really struck by a, a caller uh, on a, one of the talk radio stations today who was basically in tears, saying, "I, I, I can, I, I don't, you know, I want to be a law-abiding citizen, but I also want to feed my children, and there is nothing I can do. I can, I, I, if I have to choose between food for my children and giving BP and Shell and and, and energy companies." you know, five times the amount that they were paying a year ago, you know, the, the, the ethical and moral decision is right there. But if that makes them a criminal, then so be it. And I think that's going to be a horrible debate that's going to be, by the end of this year, being had up and down the country. And the government are going to have to, at the moment, I'm not hearing it from any of the leadership contenders, that they've even grasped the scale of this and the, the, the size of what's coming down the line. Yes, the prediction of a 15-month recession is no joke. I mean, do, do you also uh, agree, Jessica, that uh, this wasn't really something that either candidate this evening really got into? 
I do, I do think that there is there is not I, I didn't get a sense from and I haven't throughout the whole campaign got a sense of the you know the the immediate urgency I mean this is, uh, of what is coming down the track for these candidates I mean this is going to be on their desk from day one that this is the, the you know the, the the price rise is coming we're we're potentially facing people mass defaulting on their bills uh, you know a friend of mine was was only telling me this morning that she'd been told that her estimated monthly bill is going up from 170 pounds a month to 450 pounds a month which is something she says she's just not prepared to pay and she's going to cancel a direct debit and just pay the you know try and pay the bills quarterly instead and i think you will see you know people trying people saying well i'm just not prepared to pay that much i'm just going to keep paying the amount i was paying before and i i'll, I'll cancel my direct debits and 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 seeing that kind of thing happen in the autumn so, you know the a new prime minister has got to re- reckon with that reality, with businesses going bust because they can't pay their energy bills, with potentially ma- you know more mass industrial action because uh, workers are demanding pay rises, and rightly so because you know people's people's pay is just not worth as much as it as it was, and people are, are being pushed into poverty. And you know this is this is an extraordinary challenge coming down the line, and there is no one who seems to have you know particularly radical new solutions to to try and deal with it and trying to protect people mm. what is certain whoever becomes prime minister they are going to have an incredibly difficult ship to to steer jessica and harry for the moment thank you we are going to take a break coming up missing in action says the mirror we'll take a closer look at that story after the break Welcome back. You're watching the press preview. Still with me, The Sun's political editor, Harry Cole, and The Guardian's chief political correspondent, Jessica Elgott. Welcome back to both of you. Let's have a look at uh, The Sun, Harry. Um, and um, the, the headline, this is on page four into the paper, Government goes AWOL in crunch crisis. To what is the paper referring? Well, it was a bit weird today, is it, that the first time we had any proper real response that wasn't a, a three-line quote emailed out by the Chancellor was when we're seeing the, the two people who are, are vying to be the next Prime Minister rather than, you say, the actual Prime Minister. You'd think the scale of the news today would have perhaps required a bit more of a formal response from the, the ministers that many will hold responsible. There's a the big argument that, you know, Andrew Bailey has been AWOL. He's on 600 grand a year. His job is that he is tasked with keeping inflation at 2%. And he stood up today and said, actually, it's going to be 13% without a hint of you know any contrition or the fact that maybe he would perhaps should perhaps be resigning as well. Um, but the Chancellor's on holiday. He says he's working from wherever he is. He's with his family, but he's never off duty. And Boris Johnson's on his honeymoon. So there is just a feeling that, you know, are we really going to let this drag on for five more weeks? But because although we're seeing the candidates day in, day out, and they're talking about all the things they're going to do and want to do, um, it feels like the ship is pretty rudderless right now. And it feels to me that this leadership election could have been wrapped up in perhaps three weeks. And actually, the government could get on with governing again now rather than throwing rocks at each other. Uh, Jessica, do you think that the public still expect to hear from the Prime Minister, knowing that he's on his way out? The Chancellor, perhaps, given, but the, the Prime Minister, we know that he no longer will be come the beginning of September. I think, you know, it's not like this... It's not like today's announcement is a massive surprise. You know, the, 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 these rate, you know, the, the interest rates review is is due today we always knew that the news was going to be bad it's been particularly bad but you might have thought that the chancellor would have thought it might be important to be around for for this particular announcement um which has been long scheduled and that he might have thought that taking a family holiday or at least joining his family on holiday could wait you know a couple of days until until this was over just because he's you know because he could appear on broadcast he could answer people's questions about it you know he's 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 not you know Nadim Zahawi hasn't been in the in number 11 very long he may not stay in number 11 very long but this is a fairly crucial moment of his time in that office it's a very important office and I don't think it's beyond you know the, the I don't think it's beyond reason to expect him to be there for, for it when it happens. Well, we didn't have the, the, the Prime Minister or the Chancellor this evening, but we did have the leadership contenders. Um, and Rishi Sunak suggested that uh, Liz Truss's plans 
may make things worse for the economy. What did you make of that, Harry? Yeah, look, he's, this is the central mantra of his entire um, pitch to the voters. It turns out it's not necessarily a pitch that the voters want to hear. There's a fascinating poll by Redfield and Wilton out tonight, which we've got in our paper tomorrow, which shows that actually, for the first time, that Liz Truss would beat Keir Starmer in a in a, in a poll uh, of the general public at a general election, but Keir Starmer would beat Rishi Sunak. Look, I, I have some sympathy for Sunak in that he's trying to make his case very clear. He's very passionate, believes that he should tackle inflation first and then tax cuts can come tomorrow. I think where he's gone wrong is it's this idea that there is a, actually there is a live debate about this, but his campaign, it's a little bit hectoring. It's a little bit like George Osborne back in 2016 or the Tories in 2015. It's not that, you know, he's not saying, it's not saying what well, I disagree with Liz. He's saying Liz is a moral for not agreeing with him. And no one likes to be hectored like that, especially not by the guy who's had his hands on the tiller Harry. for the last two years. Yes, Harry. he was dealing with a crisis, but it just needs to think, have a bit, a bit of humbleness. We must uh, leave it there, uh, unfortunately. Our studio audience, as we, we saw, they um, gave Rishi Sunak the edge. Um, thank you both, Harry and Jessica, for the moment. Good to see you.